And I will ask Professor Douglas Drummond now, who will be talking about the School of Agriculture. And after that, I'll be reintroducing him actually, because he will also deliver a lecture today. So Professor Drummond, please. Okay, thank you, Natalie Sensei. So, hello everyone. My name is Douglas Drummond. I will tell you about our bioresource and bioenvironment program. So if you'll bear with me one second, I'll begin screen sharing. Okay, so hopefully everyone can see the screen now. So I want to tell you about bioresource and bioenvironment, which is based in the Faculty of Agriculture. So I want to begin by just explaining a little bit about exactly what bioresource and bioenvironment is about. Well, as you're probably aware, the world's population has been increasing. And as part of that, we need more food, more, and the population is putting increasing pressure on natural resources and the natural environment. So what bioresource and bioenvironment is really about is research and development of sustainable use of natural resources and a sustainable improvement in food production, processing and distribution. So the Bioresource and Bioenvironment Programme is based here in the Faculty of Agriculture in a relatively new building. As has been mentioned, the university is very international and the Faculty of Agriculture is probably one of the most international faculties. So from 1,500 students, about 15% are international students coming mainly from countries in Southeast Asia, but also from as far afield as North, South America, Africa, Europe. As one of the largest faculties, we have lots of resources to support our education and research. So that includes three university forests located throughout Japan. We have a fishery research laboratory with research vessels. There's university farms. Part of the farm is on Ito campus itself. So beside the agriculture building, we have research trial fields and greenhouses. But within the building, we have support for the very latest in research equipment. The structure of the course as outlined by Natalie Sensi, as you've heard, is a four-year course leading to a Bachelor of Science degree. And there's two ways that you can study with us. The first way is to spend four years studying here in Japan, where you have your first year of general education, second and third years more specialised, and then in the fourth year, you do research project. And I'll explain in a moment in more detail about exactly what you would do within these years. But the second way that you can study with us is in a new programme called the dual degree programme. So in this programme, you spend the first two years studying with us here in Fukuoka in Japan. But in your third year, you move to the USA and spend a year studying with Northern Arizona University before you then come back to Japan for your final year. Then after you graduate, you get a degree from Kyushu University and a second degree from Northern Arizona. So at the end of four years, you have two degrees. Obviously, you need to do more work than on the regular program, so this option isn't for everyone. You don't enter this program directly, but you apply once you've joined as a bioresource and bioenvironment student. So first year for all students is general education. And I won't go through this again, but as Natalie Sensei has described, this is a general year which most students at Japanese universities do. Of more interest is what happens in the second and third years for bioresource and bioenvironment students. And we have four main areas of specialization, animal resources, forestry and forest products, applied biosciences, agricultural resources, engineering and economics. Now, one advantage of our course is you do not need to select your specialization before you join. It's only really from the second year that you begin to select more specialized courses. So 
you can wait until you learn more about the topics before you decide on your final degree specialist area. So what do these topics cover? Well, animal resources has two comp main components. One is animal science, which is looking at all aspects of anatomy, physiology, biochemistry, biotechnology of both domestic, that means farm animals and wild animals. It's also related to food processing for animal feed and things like animal protection, which is really protecting animals from various disease and parasites. So subject areas might include anatomy, physiology, zoology, metabolism, behavior. Second aspect of animal resources is fishery science. So this covers both marine and freshwater bioscience and biotechnology. So areas such as marine biology, fisheries biology, specifically we're looking at fishing related topics. Then there are more molecular subjects, marine biochemistry, marine resource chemistry, environmental science, and aquatic field science. And increasingly, aquaculture in the form of fish farming has become important in this area as well. The second main area, as I mentioned, is forestry and forest products. So within this, one main sub-area is forest, environmental and management science. So this, as you might imagine, is really about management of forests for sustainable wood production, but it also covers things such as erosion control, more general government policies related to forest management. Second sub-area is forest biosciences. And forest biosciences is looking in more detail at the actual biology underlying tree growth in forests, but also widening out to look at the general forest ecosystem, the plants and animals that live within the forest environment. And then again, at a more molecular level, looking at natural products, which you might obtain from forests and from things like fungi, which grow within the forest environment. There's also biomaterial science, which is perhaps more traditional in the sense that it's looking mainly at wood products and areas such as the technology and the use of wood products as a building material, but also for many other advanced applications. This is a much more physical chemical analysis of biomaterials such as wood from forests. Our third main area is applied biosciences. So this has two main subdivisions. One is food science and technology, which is actually a very popular area, usually with our IUP students. And this covers all aspects of food production, food nutrition. So really anything to do with the biology, chemistry, and even into engineering related to food production, analysis, food quality, and food safety. So typical topics might be nutrition chemistry, food chemical biology, food analysis, food hygienic chemistry, but then food processing, process engineering, microbial technology, and so on. So a mixture really of very molecular and microbiology related topics in this field. The second main area within applied biosciences is agricultural chemistry. So this is biotechnology and chemistry applied to both agriculture and also natural products. So natural products are, if you're not aware of them, are the sorts of products which would be obtained from a natural source. And that can include things which might be used as medicines or as pesticides or herbicides. So this area covers both 
natural molecules like that, but also uses organic chemistry in laboratories such as shown here to modify or develop new molecules which can be used as herbicides and pesticides. So typical topics include plant nutrition, again, microbiology related areas, particularly applied microbiology, which is important in developing expression systems for natural product molecules, and up to the minute areas such as synthetic biology, which is creating new organisms to express and produce particular molecules in a more environmentally friendly way than has perhaps been possible in the past using traditional chemical methods. The fourth main area is agricultural resources, engineering and economics. And this again covers a wide range of topics. So starting with agronomy, which is really the science and application of that science to crop production. So this covers areas such as plant breeding, crop science, horticultural science, plant production physiology, plant pathology, entomology, insect genome science. So as well as studying crops, Entomology, the study of insects, is important because, of course, many of the pests and problems that affect crops are caused by insects. So this is looking at the natural biology, ecology of insects, particularly insect pests, but also at methods of control. And increasingly looking at natural methods of control using one insect species to control another. The second main subdivision here is agricultural economics, which in a complete contrast is much more social science based. So this is looking at both microeconomics and macroeconomics. So that's looking at the economics ranging from individual farms and farmers economics through to macroeconomics, which is looking at the complete economic system of a whole country and looking at how national and international policy can affect the economics of agriculture, natural resource use within that country from an economic perspective. So areas such as food and agricultural policies, agricultural and farm management, food economic analysis, food marketing and distribution. Finally, there are two more areas within this wide ranging agricultural resources, engineering and economics. So one is again, more engineering and technology based, which is bioproduction engineering. And this is really about developing the technology for food production and distribution. So this can be actual farm machinery, machinery for harvesting or for post harvest processing. A second area is environmental engineering, and this focuses mainly on soil and water resources. So this is things like irrigation and water management, water environment engineering, soil engineering, soil science, but can also include the environment within greenhouses and optimizing the environment for food production. The fourth year, as I mentioned, students join a research laboratory and as preparation for that, beginning in the second year, you'll have a series of tutorials to introduce you to the different specialised fields and topics covered by laboratories. In your third year, you would visit specific laboratories for periods of up to three months, and then you'd finally select one laboratory to spend six months in, which is usually the laboratory that you would then join for your final year project. So in the laboratory, you would be working alongside Japanese students and you would be under the supervision of the laboratory's head, the principal investigator. But you would be working on your own original research project, which you would then write up as a thesis and 
do a presentation for the faculty at the end of the course, and then you graduate. There are over 60 laboratories to choose from, so obviously we don't have time today to go through them, but the sorts of topics covered are similar to the sorts of topics which I've mentioned already in the individual specialised fields. And I recommend you have a look at our website if you'd like to know more about the kind of research that you could be doing as a student here in bioresource and bioenvironment. After graduation, as Konomi Sensei mentioned, most of our students carry on for further education for master's PhD degrees. So over 80% of our students carry on for higher degrees. About half of them remain here at Kyushu University within the Ag Faculty of Agriculture, but about one third choose to go abroad. And that's often been to North America, Western Europe. So as has been mentioned, our students have joined some of the top universities in the world for their higher education. About 12% of our students select to go directly into work after graduation. And there are a wide range of organizations and companies which they can join. So this can range from international organizations such as the UN Related Food and Agriculture Organization, or it might be in national governments, or local government, but there are also many food companies, for example. So we've had students who've joined and worked in food companies here in Japan or back in their home country, where the international experience that they've gained working in Japan and education in English has been very desirable to these international types of companies. Other possibilities include cosmetics, pharmaceutical companies, or chemical and equipment suppliers to agriculture. So as you've heard, Kyushu University, one of the top universities in Japan, where you can study in English, you have international staff and students, English speaking sports staff, but specifically for bioresource and bioenvironment, why you might want to consider our course. Well, the course offers a large choice of specializations you don't need to make your choice and your selection until after you join us. So it's often difficult at high school level to really understand what different topics and subjects are about when you come to university. So you don't need to make that choice until after you've been here and you've learned more about the course. There are small class sizes, so you get individual attention and tuition. And after you graduate, we have good career prospects for our graduates, whatever you choose to do. So thank you for your attention. If you'd like to learn more about us, please visit our website and follow us on Facebook. Thank you.